Hello and welcome to your in-depth weekly horoscope for week commencing the 30th of May for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you the standout issues and strands to look out for. Please stay with me. I will then dive deep to give you in forensic detail each of the 12th zodiac sign forecast. Now this week of course begins with a new moon in Gemini. Now Gemini energy is all about how we think. It's very nimble and agile, uh, can be very amusing, uh, very much to do with uh, sharing ideas and interacting in a bright and bubbly way. But of course the moon is very much how we feel about things and the sign of Gemini is very much more about how we assess things from a more logical viewpoint. So one of the things that we can do over the next month is to meld our drive and our ideas much more closely to how we actually feel. So it's an opportunity for sure. Now this is also a week when uh, Mars and Jupiter continue to be very closely together. The exact conjunction actually happened as last week came to a close. So that combination can give us a lot of thrust, a lot of traction, uh, a lot of enthusiasm in the sign of Aries. That's very much about getting things off the ground. But both the position of Mars and, and Jupiter are forging uh, a relatively positive angle to Venus, which of course is now returned to the sign of Taurus, which it governs. So that thrust and the ideas energy that the new moon has given us in Gemini can certainly see us working towards making the most of our resources, which Venus in Taurus can be very good at grappling with can also give us an appreciation of good food and good wine and more sensual pleasures as well. But then on Friday, Mercury ends its retrograde, also in the sign of Taurus. So, you know, we've all been challenged by this new financial reality which is kicking in and it has been retrograde since the 10th of May and in the sign of Taurus since the 23rd of May. But then... On Saturday, Mercury comes out of shadow, but also Saturn goes into a retrograde in the sign of the people, the collective, the sign of Aquarius. So it's possible through to the 23rd of October that we're going to be more uh, mindful, I think, over a period of time of how connected we are to one another. I'm going to do a special on the fact that Saturn and Uranus are going to go through uh, a square again within three degrees from the 11th of August, so please look out for that. But the other thing to tell you is that Mercury, despite that retrograde, is actually in a very subtle but powerful link to Neptune. So one of the things that we can do this week is listen to our hunches because they can serve us very well indeed. So Pisces, your week commencing the 30th of May forecast, sees the new moon in your sector of home, family, emotion. Is something about to change there? Are you manifesting a need to move home, for example, to have an addition to your family, to be more contented in your emotional world? Or... Is there the opportunity to get together in a gathering with your family or the people you consider as your extended family? All of these things are possible with the support of that particular new moon. Now, of course, we also have the combination between Jupiter and Mars in your second house. Good news financially can come to you. Now, fortune can also favour the brave with that particular combination. But of course, it's also important not to risk any asset or investment that we can't really afford. But Venus, the planet of relating, forges a subtle semi-sextile to Mars and Jupiter. And that's in your sector of everyday communication, which is where, of course, Mercury is. And that may have been causing some snags and snares, particularly around your tech, maybe about a trusted domestic appliance has played up. Perhaps you've just felt that you know, you've tried to interact with people and uh, folks have got the wrong end of your stick. 
Now Mercury, of course, is going to go forwards later this week, but it does forge a beautiful link with Neptune, your co-ruler. So subtlety around communications, even if you have felt a bit frustrated, can still be very helpful, but a conversation could inform what you're going to do with your resources. You know, whether you're thinking about moving some monies around or whether it's digital currencies or uh, stocks or it is property or just buying and selling things. The confidence that Jupiter and Mars give us can be a good thing as long as it's tempered by a degree of awareness that the thrust it brings needs to be balanced about uh, being informed. So I think your third house energy reinforced as Mercury goes direct by the end of this week will support you and of course you've got the North Node and Uranus there which are asking you to think outside the box and be open to new ideas. However later this week despite the fact that Mercury goes direct and also comes out of shadow we do have on Saturday Saturn going into a retrograde through to the 23rd of October. If there is an outstanding situation in your world that may relate to your past, your childhood, an old relationship, the loss of a family member or an animal and there is still a sense of loss that's quite active within you. I think Saturn moving through this area is asking you to to really embrace the, the pain of that loss and really look at it even if it is very painful because Saturn can reward us and although it has this dark reputation of being very uh, limiting and very challenging I think in the 12th house if you just try to ignore whatever energy may be calling for your attention particularly if it is more psychological strands then that is actually going to delay a resolution so the more you go on the front foot and embrace this Saturn retrograde the better you can do but it may mean that there will be times when you do want to retreat a little bit and just protect yourself and perhaps be a little bit more discriminating about who you spend time with but over the period of that retrograde so much knowledge and new awareness can evolve for you so we see it as an opportunity.